Hi folks, today I'm going to be talking about this anomaly found on Google Moon. It's making its way around on various websites, including major mainstream websites like Daily Mail. It appears to be a series of lights or dots appearing inside this crater here. And it was found by a fellow YouTuber. And they give the coordinates for it rather poorly. This is supposed to be 22 degrees, 42 minutes, 38.46 seconds north, but they completely left off the degrees and the symbol for seconds and ran it all together into a nonsensical bunch of gibberish. But in any case, I've located the uh, crater despite that. And we're going to take a look at it here in Google Moon and find out what's really going on here. Is it an alien lunar base, an alien spaceship, some sort of structure? What is it? So we can see the anomaly right here. And although it does have the Google Earth uh, watermark down here in the bottom right hand corner. The more relevant portion to pay attention to is this right here. The image actually comes from JAXA and the Selene probe and Google is not the primary source for these images. Google didn't launch a satellite to the moon and take a bunch of pictures of it. Actual space agencies did and Google's simply using their images and stitching them together and making the Google Moon mosaic. However, because Google is recompressing these images and uh, processing them themselves, sometimes you get glitches and problems that crop up that aren't actually in the original images, just due to Google's processing. And if we look in this image, what we can see is that uh, there are dots all over it. It's not limited to this UFO, uh, the so-called alien base or alien spaceship. You can see there's a dot in this crater here. In fact, there's a very similar looking series of dots in this crater here. If you scroll over here, you'll find more dots, more dots, more dots. Uh, here's another sort of circle of dots inside this crater. Uh, we can go up here. Oh, here's a couple more. Here's a really good, good one. Uh, in fact, if I were to turn it, yeah, like so. Hey, look! We've got a little smiley face. It's the face on the moon. We had the face on Mars, now we got the face on the moon. Sort of. Oh, here's another series of dots. Okay, so we've we've got dots and problems all over this image. Okay, look at these. All right, we got more. These must be artificial, right? There's just single dots there, and they're in a straight line. That can't possibly be natural. Something going on here. We've got another L shape up here. Uh oh, another L shape. So, okay, we've got uh, <laughs> problems all over this image. So, what what's the first step when you see something like this? Well, the first step is that you shouldn't be on Google Moon on the first place because uh, Google is not the primary source of these images. And if you see something like this and you want to know what's really going on, go to the raw data always go check out the raw data, see what the story is, see if uh, you can see more detail. Maybe if this is a real UFO, you'll, have, you'll be able to find a higher resolution version and get more detail on what's going on here in the original images. So you can go on to the uh, website for Selene and go to its data archive and download the images yourself. So I've got the website right here. So we're going to go on and we're going to uh, I'm going to show you exactly how to get the, uh, the data. So what we can do here is specify an observation range, an area on the moon that we want to see. And what it's going to do is it's going to, this, this applet here is going to search for all the images that Selene has taken uh, within the range that I specify. So we know exactly where we want to look. I've translated the coordinates for uh, this crater right here into a first of all a sensible series of coordinates unlike what you saw in Daily Mail uh, and second of all into a uh, degree decimal format that uh, this applet wants to accept so let's grab uh, the coordinates for the north point of that crater let's just increase that a little bit and we'll decrease that a little bit so what we're doing is we're creating a, a box, a bounding box just around that area around the crater and we're going to tell it that we want to find all images 
within that range. So this is uh, this is east. We want the furthest west, so that will be less. This will be more. Come on. There we go. So set up observation range. It's now going to pull up an image of the moon. And it should show us a box where this crater is located on the moon. So there we go. There it is. So you can see, okay, here's our little red box right there. So that's the area we've defined that we want images for. And just so you can see, I'm going to zoom out on Google Moon here, and you'll see that that is indeed the same crater. Okay, so we've got this smaller crater inside this larger crater. That's what this is right here. And right here is our crater of interest along the ridge of a much larger crater. Okay, so we've got the right spot. So in slightly broken English, this has been translated for English, of course. This is a you know, Japanese probe here. We want to, to select the data products. And what we're going to grab, I'm just going to add all of these. There we go. Determination. That's their button for confirm, apparently. Like I said, it's slightly broken English. It's a bit like uh, all your base are belong to us, you know. Execute search. That's simple enough. So now it's going to find all the images related. So let's see if I remember correctly. So basically, you're going to find all the pictures that the probe has taken of this region, and not all of them will be this picture. Obviously, this is just one picture here that Celine has taken. You can find other examples of pictures of the same coordinates that it's taken. But if you look, you'll see that the shadow angles and the craters, they're all different on different days. Uh, the moon will be at a different phase. The sun will be at a different angle. The shadows and the craters might be going the other way. So in this case, the crater we're interested in is right here. But you can see this shadow is going the opposite direction, so it's a completely different uh, observation, right? So we're looking for one that looks just like this. And we can zoom out and get a big picture view of what's going on. Google Moon's glitching on me here a little bit. Ignore that. It's glitching a little bit there. But uh, aside from the graphical glitches, we can get an idea of what it should generally look like. Uh, Okay, so it's actually this first one here, as it turns out. Surprise, surprise, Google grabbed the first one off the top of the list. And it's the same image. You can see the shadow angles are exactly the same. The contrast is different, that's true. But this is just a thumbnail, and it's a thumbnail JPEG. The actual image, you can specify uh, what the contrast is going to be when you export it to a standard image. So what you do is you simply click Order. Add to cart, like you're going to purchase something. It's actually free. It's not going to charge your credit card or anything. Confirm your order contents and click download. Now, it's a big download. I've already downloaded it. I'm not going to do that again. But I've already downloaded it and converted it to a PNG file. You can do so yourself as well if you want uh, just to uh, confirm everything I've already done. So I've already converted it to a standard PNG file. And the crater of interest is right here. Right there. Now, where are the dots? Where is the UFO? They're not there. Let me go back here. So we can see, oh, there's the UFO. It's not there. It's all gone. In fact, none of the dots in any of the craters are there. They're all clean. It's a nice, clean image. Google's processing has screwed it up. Now, just what's going on here? Why does it look like that? Why are all these dots around? What are these dots? Well, let me show you something. If I change the background, the general Google Moon texture background here to a colorized terrain, like a, it's basically a height map. Oh, what happened to all the dots? They turned blue. <laughs> what's happening is the hidden background, the the texture underneath this terrain model here from Celine is bleeding through on those pixels. 
So if I change the terrain, what, what it's showing back there, it corresponds because it's, it's leaking through. So if I go back to visible imagery like this, and I say I want to turn on day-night modeling, okay? And I want to simulate nighttime. Just like that, it vanishes. So if I go from day to night, a little UFO in that crater appears to disappear. Just once again, what's happening is that the background is leaking through. Those pixels are just corrupted. There's nothing there. They are literally invisible. And so whatever's behind it is bleeding through. Whether it's the sunlit surface of the moon, just sort of a neutral gray color, or if I go to the uh, height map, then it turns blue. Blue color's leaking through. It's just like pinholes in a piece of paper. That's all it is. It's not an actual UFO or anything else. It's just holes in the terrain model. But that's not what it actually looks like in the actual picture. And in fact, if I overlay the actual picture on top of Google Moon's cruddy version, you can see the crater is all matched, the shadows all matched, the contrast is a little bit different from how I've exported it here versus how Google exported it. But that's all definable in the uh, image viewer that you can get to view the raw Selene image data. Uh, in any case, you can see those dots aren't there. It's simply not there in the original image. And all this is, is Google's crappy model leaking through on pixels that are effectively transparent. That's all that is. And so again, I turn that back to gray. The dots all go to gray. And as you can see, the quote-unquote UFO and, and the uh, glitch there inside of that crater is not unique to that crater at all. All kinds of craters in this image have that same problem. And they do tend to clump together. And they're not the same way twice. I mean, it's just random. You get all kinds of fun shapes in here. A straight line right there. And, you know, we've even got other examples of, um, of a V shape sort of thing. Like right about there. It's kind of a smaller V shape right there. All sharp angles because it's all just at the individual pixel level where there's just a few pixels that are bleeding through. And so they very easily form these angles just like that. It's, uh, it's nothing unusual, per se. It's just a glitch on Google's part. So again, this is why you don't use Google Earth as a primary source of image data. It's not a primary source of image data. It's a second-hand source, and it's lower quality with glitches that didn't exist in the original images. Go to the original image source. Go to JAXA. Go download the Selene data. Look at it for yourself. You can see, and you'll find that the overall image quality is better anyway. So if you want to hunt for unusual you know, artifacts on the moon, who knows, maybe you'll find a 2001 monolith sitting on the moon. But um, if you want to do that, you should be using this data anyway. Look how much better that picture is. Just in general, the quality of the image is so much better getting it straight from the source because it's raw data. It's not been compressed. It's not been processed into a mosaic. It's just plain better. So. That's my spiel for that, and unfortunately, uh, the YouTuber found this did not find evidence of aliens or monoliths on the moon. He just found a glitch in Google, and uh, you can do all this yourself. You can uh, go download the data, and by all means, I encourage you to. It's beautiful data anyway. The pictures are gorgeous and uh, better quality. So with that, I hope you have a nice day.